In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the scene we just read about, Jesus heals a crippled woman on the Sabbath, wins over the crowd in a debate with the synagogue leader, and demonstrates how the Sabbath had become legalistic and was missing the point. After all, the purpose of Sabbath was rest and restoration. Here, God was wanting to restore this crippled woman to health and to wholeness. And yet the synagogue leader was invoking the Sabbath command to oppose this divine restorative work. By healing this woman and making the case that he did, Jesus reclaims the purpose of the Sabbath, not as a rule that's to be followed for its own sake, but as a means of restoring people and drawing them closer into relationship with God. It got me thinking, though. If Jesus came to our church on a Sunday morning, like he did at the synagogue, is this the point he'd want to make? Would he need to remind us not to get legalistic about the Sabbath? I kind of think not. For one, because no one would object to his healing someone on a Sunday, which is our holy day. We'd probably be lining up down the aisles, ready to get relief for our illnesses. And I know for a fact that your religious leaders wouldn't object to Jesus healing someone. In fact, I'd say, Jesus is in the house, my work here is done. <laughs> if we err, it's probably not on the side of rigid command following, but on the other side of the spectrum. In the Episcopal Church especially, we tend to be laid back in this area, which can be a good thing. With the guilt, shame, and exclusion that people have experienced at the hand of religion, it's good that our priority is that people feel welcomed and accepted and loved. But that doesn't mean that we have to reject the commands. The Episcopal Book of Common Prayer encourages us to know the Ten Commandments, which includes the instruction on the Sabbath, by making them a part of our Lenten observance every year. And the Catechism, or the Outline of Faith, which you can find in the back of the prayer book, talks about how these commands help us grow in relationship with God and others. And in doing so, they help us obey Jesus' commands to love God and neighbor. If Jesus came to Emmanuel on a Sunday, I wonder if rather than saying, don't get too legalistic about the Sabbath, he might say, don't forget the Sabbath altogether. After all, Jesus himself never rejected the Sabbath. He practiced sacred time, observing the various Jewish feast days, as well as the Sabbath, though not in the way some of the religious leaders would have liked. He also practiced the principle of Sabbath very often by finding time to get away from the crowds and rest and meditate and talk to God and get recharged. God, the first person of the Trinity, also not only made the Sabbath, but practiced it. Genesis tells how God made everything in six days and rested on the seventh day. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all of the work he had done. Another reason Jesus might encourage us to remember the Sabbath is because we need it. God created us, and so God knows what we need to live well. Made in God's image, we have an ability that is amazing to create and build and do. But just in the same way that God created and then rested, we also need a break and some time 
away from our labor. We need times that we aren't busy mentally or physically in production mode. Physically, we know our muscles actually need a rest so that they can repair themselves, which is how we grow stronger. And studies show the health benefits of things like meditation, where our minds just get a chance to wander. When we take that kind of rest, we not only feel better, but we go back to whatever it is we were doing with more energy. A third reason Jesus might encourage a Sabbath could be because we tend to be busier than is probably good for us. It seems we as a society only keep getting busier. Mobile devices and email make it so we can have access to our work at all times. Now it's the case that many families need both partners to work full time, which often means twice the workload on top of the demands of house management and caring for children. Too many adults find that they must work more than one job to make a living wage. And the downtime that we used to have built into our social structures, like having stores closed on Sundays and holidays, is all but disappearing. As a counter to all of that, Sabbath is a way that is built into our religion by which we can experience holy time. As Jewish philosopher Abraham Joshua Heschel points out, time is the very first thing that God made holy. It wasn't a place or an object, but time. He says that the Sabbath is about our becoming attuned to God's holiness in time, and that through it we get to share in what is eternal in time. There's a good case to be made for observing a Sabbath. But where do we begin? What might taking a Sabbath look like for us? Well, if we keep in mind the point of today's gospel, we can remember that we don't need to get overly legalistic in how it's done. For instance, if Sunday isn't an option for you, it doesn't have to be on Sunday. Or if doing a whole day seems possible, Start with a few hours. It could be time just sitting outside and staring, not having to do anything. It could mean being with friends, fully present in conversation without the distraction of work. It could be as simple as having a regular family dinner that isn't missed, where cell phones are out of sight. Honoring a Sabbath is about setting some time aside intentionally to rest, reconnect with God, reflect on one's life, and attend to our relationships. To begin a Sabbath practice, start by finding a good time and do whatever preparation is needed beforehand to make it happen. And then be intentional about how that time is spent so that you don't get sidetracked doing things that aren't restorative. You might even ask other people to be involved. I had a professor in college who had a group of friends that would observe a Sabbath together on Sundays. After church, they would all take turns getting together in someone's home, and they would do whatever meal preparation and other work that was needed so that no one had to be busy, and they could all just enjoy each other and their worship in the day. Today, we can think about what it might be like for us to observe a Sabbath. Just imagine what you would do with this wonderful gift of time. It's not a luxury, but it's something we need. Through it, we, like the crippled woman, are touched by the holy so that we can be restored. Amen.